opportunity. Uh, my name is Viktor Oliver Lörinz. I'm the vice president of the Hungarian Academy of uh, Hungarian uh, Academic Staff Forum, and uh, we will present now the case of the Hungarian uh, Academy, how the, the Academy has been stripped from its uh, research network. And uh, all the other presenters, uh, the panelists, are also member of the board of uh, this uh, Hungarian Academy Staff Forum. Uh, and uh, it is a case study, but it will be also interesting that uh, this pattern applies also on other uh, countries in Central uh, Europe and Eastern Europe. So it is an important uh, uh, question and an important uh, example. Uh, and uh, now I would like to, to uh, give the floor to uh, Laszlo Peter from the uh, Wigner uh, Center uh, of the former uh, research network of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. Uh, and, and I also have to state that we are speaking now in the name of this Hungarian Academy Staff Forum and not in the name of the research network. So please, Laszlo. Welcome to everyone. I am sharing the screen immediately. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, welcome to the Forum on the Scientific Freedom in Hungary. Uh, this talk will tell about uh, the comparison of the situation uh, of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences and the universities, focusing also but the changes happened in both sector uh, in the last decade. Shortly about the history of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, uh, it was established uh, in 1825. Uh, the birth of the Academy is strongly related to the donation of a nobleman with a full year income, who was called Istvan Seicheni, and he is the person whose portrait can be seen in the logo of the Hungarian Academy Staff Forum. The Academy Palace, which is a great looking classical building, was built in the downtown of Hungary, close to the, uh, the downtown of Budapest, close to the Danube River. <clears throat> it was completed by 1865 and is the headquarter also at present serving the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. Uh, for understanding uh, the role of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, you must know uh, that it is equally uh, a traditional institute, a national symbol with an intermediate status. Since 1990, uh, it's a public body formally independent of the state. Uh, although it was uh, established privately, uh, shortly thereafter, it became a part of the state administration too, which is, uh, uh, was uh, a topmost trend uh, during the Soviet times uh, in the Eastern European bloc. And therefore, what we will tell is strongly relevant to the same countries. Uh, the Hungarian Academy of Sciences used to have an institutional network. This is very similar to the network of national laboratories operated in many other countries. The academy can also, also issue a title. This is the doctor of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. Uh, this can be uh, given uh, after a long-term scientific work for individuals uh, who produced uh, a significant scientific output. As, this, uh, as the status of the Hungarian, of the Academy, Hungarian Academy of Sciences differs from other academies, the membership equally differs. Uh, it is not uh, an organization that you can just simply enter. Uh, the election of the member is a distinction. Uh, it is a part of one's career. And therefore, uh, people who are the members of the academy do not pay membership fee, but rather get a honorarium. Uh, there is a public body which is really free to enter for people with Hungarian citizenship uh, who have PhD. Until 2019, 
the Hungarian Academy of Sciences used to have a network, this, uh, a research institute network. This was developed uh, from about 1950 and included an institute with a full profile characterizing the entire science from literature to legal studies and from physics to pharmacy. However, in 2019, the government decided uh, a strong reorganization whose steps will be detailed in one of the next talk. Shortly, it was an abrupt decision without any alleviation of diverse interest and result, resulted in the establishment of a new supreme organization whose only task is the supervision of the Research Institute Network. Uh, this moment when this transformation was initiated was the birth of the Hungarian Academy Staff Forum, uh, which is a kind of protesting association now against the changes uh, of the treatment of science in Hungary. So what was the structure like before this enforced transformation. Uh, both the legal owner and the supervising organization of the research centers and institute was the Academy of Sciences. Uh, this uh, unit, the Academy, obtained the basic supply of these research organizations through the national budget However, the academy could treat these resources uh, fully at its own discretion without any political influence. So uh, it was uh, distributed between all fields of science with a reasonable sharing of resources by sponsoring all type of research centers. At the same time, there was a strong information exchange between the research unit leaderships and the presidency of the Academy of Sciences. And beside this uh, pattern, there was also a weak feedback uh, from the public body of the Academy of Sciences and the members uh, to the operation of the Academy of Sciences through the uh, election system of the presidency. With the legal modification passed through or pushed through in 219, the academy lost the opportunity of the professional supervision of the research network. So this direct relationship between the academy and the research network was fully eliminated. At the same time, the legal issue has not been solved uh, how uh, it can be deprived from its property without a pronounced confiscation. Another important feature of the new system that is also eliminated the dialogue between the research center and the supervising organization. So there is no influence uh, on the, from the research system to uh, the maintenance and supervising organization. Also, uh, you can see from this scheme that the leaders appointed uh, to guide this so-called Utwish Laurent Research Network is mostly appointed by the government and there is practically no feedback from the research centers. So, why do we feel jeopardized concerning the budget and the academic integrity, there is no guarantee that the new supervising organization would respect the integrity of science and would intend to sponsor with a reasonable resource sharing uh, units related to all fields of science. This fear is greatly fired by the repeatedly appearing and very threatening statements of people close, close to the government worldview on the unnecessity of some studies or sciences uh, performed in some of our institutes. 
We also doubt in the science conformity of the new supervising system, especially because some institutes newly established by the government miss any scientific standard and control, but are highly funded as compared to the traditional workshops of science. Another concern in the treatment of the academy, a lack of government partnership. This is clearly indicated how the, by how the academy-related legislation took place before and after the change of our government in 2010. So the enforced transformation of the research system and the lack of the openness of the government to the discussion gave birth to the Hungarian Academy Staff Forum that we all represent here uh, during this session. Uh, this is practically an alliance uh, of researchers of the former uh, Academy Institute network. When the situation of the Hungarian Academy is reported, we have to talk about the universities too, because uh, not only because of the similarity of the manner as the government treats us, but also because this unit developed highly parallel pathways uh, during uh, before uh, 2010. This means that uh, there was a, a formal equivalence in both positions and wages in these two systems. Formerly, the positions between the universities, as indicated by these arrows, were filled up by internal election, also that of the rector, who was formally appointed later by the head of the state. And at the uh, both at the faculty and the university level, the councils were, uh, there was a student representation in all councils up to the level of one third. The structure of the leading bodies at the universities has also changed uh, after 2010. A chancellor was appointed uh, by the government to the universities who became responsible to all financial efforts and took a strong leadership over the entire financial situation of the universities. And the strategic decision-making body became the circled consistorium in which uh, the delegates also come from uh, the government and mostly businessmen who have nothing to do with the fields educated at the universities. So we think that such changes landmark uh, the deprivation from the authorities of these universities too. Recently, a new model also appeared that serves uh, as a transformation and, man uh, and maintenance model of the universities. This is the so-called foundation model. Uh, formally, the entire university and its properties uh, are allocated uh, to uh, a foundation. The trust, the board of trustees, uh, which is a body uh, fully administered by the ministry, uh, obtained uh, the right to delegate the rector to the university, irrespectively of the internal election processes within the university. This is a highly controversial model because all members uh, of the of the models are like foreign person with respect. Uh, to the, to the education within the university. We strongly think that such reorganizations are uh, uh, highly uh, uh, dem democracy deficient uh, operations and these uh, measures just impede the university to fulfill its mission in the education and the research. A prominent example just from nowadays the reorganization attempt of the University of Theatre and Film Arts. Uh, the story bears essentially all the identifiers that make the process anti-democratic, from neglect of the internal election through the discussionless reorganization of the appointment of non-professionals as university leaders. No wonder a very strong protest movement has started in the summer and the protest of the university enjoys a much stronger public support 
that we, uh, the, uh, the members of the research network, obtained a year ago. So the situation is really far from reconciliation now. And right in this moment, now today we uh, celebrate a, a national uh, a holiday in Hungary as the uh, anniversary of the revolution of 1955. Uh, the demos one of the major demonstrations uh, will lead to the University of Theatre and Film Arts. As a summary, so we feel a general loss of autonomy in the entire academic sector in the Hungary. The general pattern is the same regardless of whether we speak about research institute, academic institutions, or universities. Political delegates occupy the majority of the positions in the leadership. Uh, as a result of the inclusion of intermediate decision-making bodies, no one would take the political responsibility of maintenance-related decision. And uh, at all field uh, we scrutinized we lose the feedback channels from the organizations and employees uh, to the leadership. We have practically no one to discuss the issues that touches our futures fundamentally. And there are ways open for decision that are pronouncedly against the professional viewpoints. So such decisions is systematically destroy the autonomy of organizations related to to science uh, and, uh, uh, and arts and uh, also the higher education. Okay, this is my summary and thank you for your attention and I pass the talk to the next speaker. Thank you very much. So the next speaker will be Martin Zaskowitz, who was a researcher in the research and uh, at the University, Carroll University of the Reformed Church. So please, Martin. Um, thank you very much, um, Victor, and also uh, to the organizer. I hope you see my um, uh, presentation. It's my honor and pleasure to be here to, to be participant of this conference. So in my talk, uh, I try to be as, as um, precise as possible. I speak only one one aspect of the political interference. This is basically the science funding. In the last couple of years, especially during the reorganization process of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, one important means of, how to say, intention of uh, political interference was the funding, the permanent changing of the funding system. And it's quite interesting. So it was not about violating individual rights of the researchers, but rather a systematic change via changing by changing the uh, finance system you have to know that the hunger Academy of sciences which which was it, itself a learning society and also a research network had different sources of funding a basic funding annually competitive fundings fellowships and grants and also international fundings and i i, I have to say and and, and that the hunger and academy of sciences at least the research networks were quite successful especially in the international one uh, compared in the region Hungary won um, basically much more than all the other countries like uh, European research grants. Uh, and within Hungary, it's important to say that uh, uh, together with Central European University, which was actually expelled from Hungary and now it's Vienna, the, uh, the Hungarian Academy, of, uh, the institutes of the research network of the Academy started with MTA, all the red ones, they all together were the leading, leading institutions winning um, uh, uh, European uh, uh, grants. Of course, if you compare it uh, globally, like within Europe, it was relatively limited that there's a success, but within the region, the hunger and academia was, was quite successful. And also, if you compare the, the money amount, uh, that's the same. But still, still being the hunger and academy, the, the research network is relatively successful. Of course, there was always room for, for improvement, no question. That was this attempt to uh, of total reorganization of the network, but even before, even before the Hungarian Academy was deprived of, it, of its uh, research network, there were numerous attempts from the government to gain financial control over research and buy the financial control 
uh, to influence uh, the outcome. Uh, I have to mention just a couple of things about the, the whole process itself. There was no written proposition. There was no written reform plan from the ministry. Uh, there were permanent arbitrary decisions by the government, uh, regardless of the negotiations and agreement uh, between the ministry and the academy. And there was a, a continuous, how to populist the discourse from the government and media outlets, um, government, pro government media outlets about the efficiency of science in Hungary, innovation, national values, and so on and so forth. But I just, uh, I just put here like four different kind of attempts, uh, like types of, um, of, of, uh, of, of, of how to gain financial um, control over research in, uh, over the, the academy. The budget reallocation, blackmailing uh, with withholding the budget, and actual withholding uh, of the budget, threatening with the plan, so it's also, also a type of black, uh, uh, blackmailing, which even the, the president of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, Lovas Laszlo, admitted at some point, yeah, he was blackmailed by the minister, and unilateral uh, introduction of, of, of tenders, of shady tender. I'm going to talk about that uh, in the next couple of minutes. But before that, I, I, I just I mentioned the context was um, a sort of an academy bashing uh, a media campaign, uh, by the minister and by the media outlets, and a couple of them were about financial issues. Like they st stated that the network is outdated, even if there was a reform made by this government uh, in 2012, and saying the efficiency of the network is questionable, even if a couple of years ago the minister himself praised the, the network. Or, or, or there was a claim that basic funding as such, this annual automatic basic funding as a system is outdated and, and in Europe it's not practiced anymore, which would also lie because all the examples the minister referred to in Germany, uh, in the Netherlands, in Sweden, they, they, all the networks usually have like 40%, 50% basic funding and then grants and additional uh, finance on the top of it. And also other claims that the no academy has research network in Europe, which was also no true, and small countries should not have basic research, the fundamental research network. Uh, rather, we should purchase the results of basic uh, uh, research. But th but actually, actually, it's only a, a luxury of, of very rich countries because buying the results is much more expensive than creating it at this level. And the last one, and I think the most important sort of claim that the state is a business commissioner in the whole process. So the state, that is the government, should choose the research fields. Uh, in the Hungarian saying, and also in this saying, who pays the pipe per cause, the tune. But the problem is that the government uh, consider the, the taxpayer money as their own. So, and also scientific autonomy was not calculated into this statement. So basically they claim that if the government pays for the for, for, for the research, they should they should say what what all the money is spent on, which is obviously contradicts the scientific autonomy, even guaranteed by the fundamental law, the constitution of the country. So let me start with examples. This budget reallocation without consultation it happened in 2018, uh, June July. It happened quite interestingly that the the, the the ministry, the Information and Technology Ministry, proposed the new law. To the academy to take away, reallocate the budget of the research network to the ministry and gave only 54 minutes to the uh, to the academy to comment on it. Uh, and obviously the, the MTR, so the, the academy's presidium, uh, said that this is a violation of uh, uh, at least old agreement. Second, if, if they separate the public duty, because the academy has a public duty and uh, operational cost to carry out this public duty. This is unacceptable, even unconstitutional. Uh, but their idea, and that basically this is violation of the financial autonomy, but basically the government rejected this, this um, consideration and accepted the law, but they said it's only a technical, a minor change. And you can see that in 2018, from the finance ministry, automatically came the money to the academy, and the academy had the discretion to decide how to spend it. But in 2019, two thirds of the money was uh, going through the ministry, and they said it's only technical. But it turned out quite, quite, quite quickly, and that basically no, no, uh, the ministry gonna abuse this position. 
because at the, in September, uh, coronavirus are not that important. They had a proposal that certain institutions should be uh, organized out of the academy. But when the academy said that this is unacceptable, the breakup of the research network, then as a reaction, the, the ministry started to blackmail the academy with, by withholding the budget as long as uh, a, a compromise is not uh, uh, made. And they claim that they only they can only pay the salaries for the workers, the researchers, and no additional cost. Which obviously was a that was the risk that the whole network gonna go bank, bankrupt in a couple of months. So this was a second attempt by blackmailing the academy or withholding the budget. Obviously, the law guaranteed that that right to the the ministry. Uh, but and also there were long debates um, whether other grant monies can be used for paying the utilities or not an academy rejected no it's not it's legally unacceptable so and after after a while basically the academy uh, uh, said an absolute no and the academy didn't give in so this attempt uh, failed the, the next uh, was uh, that the ministry introduced the unilaterally, uh, uh, unilaterally uh, uh, a new tender, a kind of shady tender. It was it was called the a program of excellence. It was not a grant system; it was a program of excellence, which was quite problematic because the research center had to apply for the entire budget, not only additional money, money, but the entire budget, which is qu quite risky because in case uh, an institution cannot win anything in a year there's no money not even to to pay the the utilities the, the the gas bill the electricity bill so obviously within this system the institutions try to please the ministry and the government by choosing topics which they believed gonna be really acceptable by the ministry so in itself this this tender was um really problematic uh, in that respect. Also, it was uh, problematic because universities applied for extra money while the academy had to apply for, for the hub, for full budget uh, within this uh, system. So it was really unfair and the evaluation principles were really unclear. And the last problem, the most important problem was that the minister himself had a, not only control, a veto. So a list of topics had to be submitted, but the minister had the right to change the topic. And we knew that this this is kind of uh, kind of problematic, uh, and and after all, uh, the academy in a meeting decided that the academy will not enter this scheme, uh, and 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 rejected this this whole proposal, even if the whole scheme started. So you can see here that this is not 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 a, not an attempt to influence the individual researchers, but in a, an institutional uh, 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 top bottom attempt. And I think I have only like two minutes, so I can just say that the uh, the last um, system in which we are is also problematic, the new system, uh, which is created right after uh, all the attempts were rejected and denied by the academy. And when it turned out that basically there is no agreement between the academy and the government, and the government would accept only an agreement in which the academy accepts all the conditions, including that the research network would work outside of the academy. Uh, given that the General Assembly of the academy many times with the total majority said no, an absolute no to this proposal, uh, the government unilaterally and, and in an arbitrary way deprived the academy of research network and set up a new uh, leadership uh, with people, uh, with leaders appointed by the prime minister. The problem here in this system that there is a potential for political interference, mainly indirect and mainly personal, and also it requires the cooperation of the research network, uh, like serving the cultural and scientific social aims of the government. So, like, like there is a kind of tendency, in a, an atmosphere, in which some institutions and some some directors try to please the government in order to maintain the operation of certain institutes. Because the, the leaders, obviously the directors had to take into account that he's responsible for, for a couple of hundreds of workers and their families. He cannot risk, even if the question is something theoretical like in uh, academic freedom. And the last one 
which I would say problematic in this whole new system that is totally centralized. So not only political control of the minister, that's one thing. It's totally centralized. Uh, basically in Hungary, all research network, all research uh, funding is centralized in the hands of the one or two ministries. So basically there is no alternative. Uh, in, in, in the United States and in Europe, if you if you are not welcome in, in one one agency and if you if you don't win in, in one grant scheme, then you can go to the other. But here in each and every research grant, the research funding source is is uh, in the hand of the Minister of, uh, of um, uh, uh, Innovation and Technology or the Cultural Minister. So this system itself created um, a, 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 a atmosphere in which the institutions and the leaders have the feeling that they have to tend towards um, sort of, you know, the vision and, the, and they, they, they have to please the ministry and the kind of the expectation of the government, then they can guarantee winning certain money. In the new system, we actually don't know what's going on one and a half year gone and nothing really happened. So we don't really know what, what, what this whole rearrangement happened, but we, we are not really positive and optimistic. Uh, looking back in the last two, two years in which there were many attempts of, uh, of influencing uh, scholarship and, and research by, by changing the, the finance system. And I think I have to uh, finish here. Thank you for your attention and, and Judith is going to take it over. Thank you here. very much. So the next speaker is Judith Gardos. Uh, from the Center for Social Sciences. Uh, you did the floor yeah. is now yours. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. I will share my screen just a minute. So, um, uh, it's an honor to be here. Thank you very much. Um, um, I will talk about scientific and other fields uh, in Hungary. I will I will base on what the others have already told and and provides a lot more information. Uh, and I will of course speak about uh, everything in the light of the recent uh, changes that the other my colleagues have have described. Um, um, just I will just uh, go through the topics very quickly. Um, I will use uh, Pierre Bourdieu's uh, theory of fields. Uh, maybe some of you are acquainted with it. Yeah, I am a sociologist of, of science, so that's that's why I'm using this theory, which is a, a great theory to um, to describe what's happening. Um, so then I will speak speak about scientific fields, and then um, I will speak about. Um, um, uh, this case study of science funding of the scientific network here in Hungary. And I will speak about how politics, science and economics are interconnected uh, and these fields are uh, intervening each other. Um, I have some sources. We, we have conducted written and oral interviews with researchers uh, who are part of the Hungarian Academy Staff Forum. Um, so that's not a representative sample, but still, um, I think it, it, it will show uh, uh, some general um, uh, ideas. So what, what is a field? Very, very quickly, just so you understand what I'm talking about. Fields are environments with competition between actors. Actors are not only people, but are, uh, can be groups or institutions, etc. Fields have uh, different positions uh, where these actors can interact. There are existing actors who have been in, the, in, in, in a specific field for a long time. Um, and there are insurgents. There are new people, new researchers, or new institutions, as we have seen, or new resources of funding, as we have also seen. As a, so these are uh, new, um, new uh, uh, actors that come. Um, and there is in every field an emergence of a specific type of capi capital. We will speak about what this type of capital in science is. Uh, but what is really important that all uh, specific capital in a field is in reality a capital of recognition. So people in the same field as, uh, as, as, uh, as the colleagues, for example, in science, recognize that somebody has this capital. 
So it's, a, it's very important, the recognition between the actors who are in a specific field. There are autonomous fields. Uh, what does this mean? Autonomous fields set it, their own rules. Um, uh, there are institutions that are specific to these uh, fields, um, and the rules are uh, uh, defined among the agents in this field. So th they are not external rules, but internal rules. And of course, there are heteronomous um, fields that are uh, that are not autonomous, so they don't set their own rules, etc. And there are unstable and stable fields, which is also very important. Unstable fields change a lot, uh, uh, very quickly. So let's talk about science as a field. Um, um, in science, the practices and productions are evaluated according to the criteria internal to the domain of science. So uh, scientists among each other uh, 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 are uh, evaluating their, uh, each other's work. Um, the indicator of the uh, autonomy of the scientific fields field is that the authorities and mechanisms for selection and consecrations are immune to external influences. What is, so what is the specific capital of the science, uh, scientific field? Um, well, it is truth. So that statements that are regarded as truthful. These, this is the specific capital, uh, uh, true statements about, um, about the world. And uh, as I have said, uh, um, the, this uh, uh, um, specific capital has to be accounted for by the members of the specific of, of this scientific field. So, uh, 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 by the colleagues, how is it measured? This specific capital, how is truthfulness measured in 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 the science? It's it, it's a very big question, and of course, there is no good answer. But as we have it now, it's measured by many different. Um, possibilities by citation, how many people cite a, a, a paper, uh, how, whether someone is uh, publishing the work in a good paper or in a prestigious journal or in a, by, by, by a prestigious uh, editor. Or uh, truthfulness can be measured by confirmation or the lack of refutation of a, of a theory by the fellow scientists in their fields. Or it can be measured by funding. If someone gets a lot of money because their work is regarded as good and true, then this is also uh, a measurement for, for the capital this person has in the scientific field. So what happens when the scientific field's autonomy is growing? Um, it, 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 uh, uh, it means that there is a closure uh, effect, it, that the laity is separated from the scientific field. Um, it means that the field is produced and produces agents who master and possess an area of spe uh, specific competence in that uh, in that field. And uh, another um, uh, another um, effect is that the field functions in accordance with the interests inherent in the type of activity that characterizes it. So that the field functions in accordance with the the activity. In this activity is producing true statements about the world. So why are we doing science? Why, why is science important? Um, of course, there are many answers to this, but they, there are two interconnected but analytically different uh, aims regarding science. So uh, science needs to be useful. We have seen uh, yesterday a lot of presentations uh, uh, and, and panels that dealt with science as, as, as an activity that is useful for example, uh, useful against um, against uh, the pandemic. And there is an, another aim of science that is um, that science needs to generate new new knowledge. And of course, uh, these are interconnected. But we have to uh, we have to distinguish these if we want to speak about um, the influence of politics and economics to science, because these two different aims generate different dominant narratives about science. Um, and we, we have seen that the usefulness of science is the dominant narrative about Hungarian science now. And of course, it's not only typical for Hungary, but in the world, in this COVID crisis, the usefulness of science has, uh, has become very important. So what does useful mean? It can mean a lot of things. Things, for example, it's good for the health of people. 
It's good for poor, disadvantaged, oppressed people, so science can help these people uh, or help groups or help uh, societies, for example, help minorities on the, or help third world problems. So, so we have seen, uh, uh, again, yesterday, a lot of uh, talking about science as helping poor groups, disadvantaged groups. And what we see in Hungary now is, uh, is a narrative that science has to be good for the economy or for the power of, of Hungary, or, or, or yeah, the power of a country. Uh, again, just, just a little reminder uh, that the m most universities and research institutions in Hungary are financed by the state. So there are in the universities, there are some tuition fees by students, not even all of the students but it is not enough really for qualitative research uh, projects. Uh, the main funding of science comes from the Hungarian taxpayer and the EU funds, so EU taxpayers. So let's um, uh, see some recent practices of, Hungarian, of the Hungarian government regarding the scientific field. Um, uh, I will, uh, I will um, focus on those topics that have not been um, uh, mentioned by my colleagues earlier. So we have seen, um, uh, the grant money of the biggest independent research fund in Hungary um, uh, provided to, to the government's loyal friends. This is a recent a recent happening. It happened some weeks ago. So uh, the, uh, the scientific committees um, had a ranking and a list who should get the funding. And uh, the minister modified these decisions and gave money to some loyal friends uh, of the government. There has been a radical altering of the national research funding scheme. There were new and very large uh, uh, funding schemes introduced, again, to loyal friends of the government and, and to those topics which deemed important for, again, uh, the economy of Hungary or the political field of Hungary. Uh, for example, large monies are given to the automotive industry and the research uh, behind it. Uh, you have to know Hungary is very dependent on German um, car um, factories producing here. And we have seen new research institutions created uh, for ideological topics, uh, uh, many of them. Uh, for example, um, they are researching the origin of Hungarian people, which is a, a very important um, uh, topic for, uh, for a lot of researchers, but mainly uh, or a lot of um, right-wing um, um, researchers about, uh, about the importance and the, and the origins of the Hungarian. We have seen ideological topics, uh, uh, anti-LGBTQ agenda of these new research uh, uh, institutions. We have, seen, um, we have seen that these new research institutions are very heavily funded. Um, they, the people who are working there approximately get the double wages as we get in our, in our research network. We have seen a takeover, a takeover attempt of, of uh, research labs that cannot be duplicated. So Hungary is a, a small country. We cannot duplicate uh, um, difficult and, and uh, costly research labs. And we have seen, as, as, um, as Martin has uh, already said, attacks uh, by pro-government media outlets on some topics and some scientists in our own network. For example, people who are um, researching gender or, uh, or LGBTQ. So all these practices that I have, uh, I have uh, uh, talked about lead to a heteronomous, so a less autonomous scientific field. I have, uh, here you have a little diagram where, where, where I sh uh, show the political field, the economic field, and the scientific field. Of course, always these fields somehow interact, but in Hungary they are very much interacting with each other. So the scientific field becomes less and less autonomous. Um, what do I mean by this? It doesn't function in, a, in accordance with the interests inherent in the type of activity that characterizes it. So the, the main aim of science is the production, production of true knowledge conducted by own rules. Um, if, uh, if narratives uh, like the economic gain or the political importance or innovation that is a buzzword uh, become important, then science will become less autonomous. Uh, if we have ideological restrictions on science, for example, uh, the, uh, gender studies MA were forbidden in Hungary uh, uh, two years ago, uh, then it doesn't function in accordance with, uh, with the interests of the scientists. Um, uh, 
uh, if if uh, science isn't produced by agents who master an area of scientific competence, if money uh, research grants are given to loyal friends, uh, then the scientific field will become less autonomous. Um, if uh, if authorities and mechanisms for selection and consecrations are not immune to external influences, if uh, a committee's de decision is altered by the minister, the, the field of science will become less autonomous. So now I will uh, speak very briefly ab about some experiences of research here, researchers that we have um, gathered in the last months. Uh, we have seen new actors, so our new bosses, have uh, no expertise in leading scientific institutions, so there is a very uh, difficult communication with them. We have unnecessary and lengthy bureaucracy. Um, uh, the takeover of our research network is not seen as a result of a leg legitimate procedure. The, my colleagues were talking about this uh, in length. It was rather seen as a result of a direct influence of, of the political field. Uh, so this new network is seemingly independent, but in reality, the majority of the board is appointed by Prime Minister Orban. We have no legitimate leaders. Legitimate would mean for scientists that I have uh, spoken with, uh, good scientists or, or who have expertise in science management, but our leaders don't. Um, the long-term strategic and financial plans for the new network are non-existent or really chaotic. So there were promises about extended funding, then the, then, then there were financial cuts. Now we get uh, funding extended, so it's really chaotic. Uh, uh, lacking, we have a lacking stability. Um, uh, we have always changing uh, bosses. Um, uh, we, we, people see the rules of scientific field and its autonomy really as endangered. And this new focus on economic value, which is a, and the innovation that is a buzzword that really uh, is everywhere, is seen not as, as something positive. Um, uh, people see uh, experience insecurity about their careers, their finances, uh, about the relationship between science and politics. So wages are extremely low in Hungary. Just to, to, uh, to have some numbers, approximately people in our research network of the former Hungarian Academy of Sciences, people um, uh, approximately um, um, earns between $600 and $1,300 net for a full-time job. So people have to have multiple jobs. There is a brain drain to Western Europe or, and to the US and outside of the uh, scientific field. So people have less time for research. Uh, and they see science as a practice with open and uh, and dead ends that is science as endangered. Thanks for your attention. Thank you very much, Judith. And uh, now I would like to add also several uh, remarks from the legal point of view of the of the story. And by sharing my presentation. So, so the as uh, mentioned earlier, the the uh, freedom of science is uh, also mentioned in the actual uh, fundamental law of Hungary. Uh, which uh, is the new name of the Hungarian constitution after 2010 because of the new regime, the, the Fidesz government state that uh, uh, we return to the unwritten constitution uh, which is more or less similar like uh, that one in the, in the United Kingdom and that's why uh, this text is not the whole constitution, just a, a part of it but practically, is uh, this this text is the new constitution of uh, of Hungary, uh, which repeats the uh, the statements of the old constitution from 1989 on uh, the question of uh, the freedom of uh, science, uh, which you can see here, um, and this uh, paragraph was uh, completed with the fourth amendment uh, of the constitution in 2013 
uh, which also mentions uh, for the first time the uh, the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, uh, stating that Hungary shall protect the, the scientific and artistic freedom of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences and the Hungarian Academy of Arts. And there is also an interesting part uh, on the the, the uh, right of the government uh, concerning uh, the uh, management of the higher education, uh, which you can see uh, below. And the problem is that it is a good thing that uh, uh, the new constitution, the new fundamental law protect the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, but uh, it's rather a void statement because during the legislative process, uh, uh, or association uh, argued that uh, uh, the the actual text protect the Hungarian Academy of Sciences as it is, so uh, together with the research network. Uh, but this uh, argument was not uh, not uh, taken seriously by by the Hungarian government, and this amendment also shows the first steps toward. Uh, the actual system. Uh, on the one hand, uh, the the Hungarian Academy of Arts gained the same recognition than the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, uh, despite the fact that uh, the Hungarian Academy of Sciences is much more older. So, the uh, the Hungarian Academy of Arts was uh, established recently, and uh, it uh, uh, contains mainly. Uh, right-wing uh, artists uh, nowadays and the other problem was that that, that was an other uh, academy of letters and arts established by the hungarian academy of sciences so uh, uh, against this academy they they founded the government and the parliament funded a new academy uh, they give an extens extensive number of, uh, of building for, for this academy, which uh, led to to protest uh, uh, by the by the artist uh, against the against this uh, measure, so you can see this protest on the right side, uh, which is a kind of burial, which uh, makes reference to to an older burial, the the burial of Imran Nagy in 1989. Uh, uh, which is linked to the revolution which started uh, uh, on this day in 1956. And it's an, also an iconic uh, uh, venue because uh, Viktor Orban, the actual prime minister, delivered the first, the, the very famous speech uh, 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 at this uh, reburial. So, so this uh, action was also uh, somehow symbolic. And also uh, this uh, fourth amendment established the chancellor system uh, in the, or it, it made possible the chancellor system at the universities, uh, stating that uh, the chancellors are not uh, uh, the real leaders of the universities. They uh, only have to do uh, uh, have a mission uh, uh, on the on the bu budget, but as uh, I, uh, as my colleague uh, presented earlier, it is obvious that uh, uh, it is a, a very important uh, a restriction on the autonomy of uh, uh, of the Hungarian universities, and uh, for uh, the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, several models were proposed, uh, also by the government. Uh, the first one is uh, that uh, the government should gain more uh, influence uh, within the academy, uh, which was refused by the academy itself. And there was this period also mentioned by my colleagues uh, uh, when the budget was at the ministry and the control was at the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, which is also a nightmare from the point of view of uh, administrative uh, uh, law. And uh, the third uh, model proposed uh, was uh, a foundation, um, which uh, this, this, uh, this model uh, is problematic. It was also mentioned uh, earlier because of the appointment of uh, the members of, of the board, but also because it is exempt of uh, public procurement. And that's why you can 
uh, spend uh, public money easier and without uh, control. Uh, so finally, this uh, uh, this model was not applied uh, on the Hungarian Academy of Sciences or the research ne network of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, but it, it was applied on other universities uh, like the University of um, theater and movie uh, art mentioned also uh, earlier um, but uh, the other aspect of the whole story uh, is the question of the ownership of the uh, hungarian academy of sciences on uh, its uh, research infrastructure and building so of course uh, like in other uh, countries ownership is also protected the property rights are also uh, protected uh, in the Hungarian fundamental uh, law, so in the Hungarian constitution. Uh, and uh, it is important for our case uh, uh, because uh, on the one hand, uh, the CEU case, so the case of the Central European Union, which was uh, decided uh, uh, several uh, days ago, also focused other topics and not on the question of freedom of science uh, uh, because the university also talked and and also the the former president of the hungarian academy talked that uh, referring uh, to the freedom of science only uh, cannot uh, uh, lead uh, to to the best uh, result uh, and the other aspect of, of uh, the question of ownership is that uh, there is a new approach in uh, in comparative law and uh, in uh, legal research which uh, uh, focuses this on the so-called commons so in the legal sense and not in the, uh, uh, the sense of uh, economics and commons in this sense means all the the property laws all the budgetary background which are linked to human rights for, for instance, housing and uh, access to, to clean water, etc. And that's why uh, uh, it is also important for us to, to uh, analyze the question of, uh, of the uh, actual state of the, hang uh, of the property of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. So as it was mentioned below, it was established as a private foundation and uh, from private uh, money for from one uh, year income of uh, Count Istvan Széchenyi, but it was uh, shortly after recognized by uh, law uh, also, but uh, the, the academy later also received the further donations. So the, the main part of the, of the fortune of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences came from private uh, sources, but of course there were also uh, public sources uh, from the states and also there were several losses during the two world war um, but after the, the after the the change of the regime uh, after 89 uh, the the property of the academy was restituted to 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 the academy itself and uh, uh, now I would like to shortly present uh, the different elements of, of, uh, of this property. Uh, beside the uh, main building of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, which is presented uh, here uh, behind Will Smith, I tried to cheer up a little bit the presentation with uh, the uh, maybe known movies. Uh, and beside the, the regional states, seats uh, of the Hungarian Academy, uh, the, the academy also had uh, uh, condominiums and soils, so they, uh, it had an independent income uh, in order, order to uh, ensure the, the, the uh, budgetary independency from the state. So you can see one of the condominium uh, uh, on the uh, right side, which is now the library of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. Another one was featured uh, several movies and music videos. Uh, uh, it was also uh, earlier a condominium of the uh, Hungarian Academy of, of uh, Sciences. Uh, and uh, of course, there is a, a, a huge uh, research infrastructure uh, uh, which contains also 
uh, uh, buildings uh, in good locations. So, for instance, here at, at the Lake Balaton, there is the Limnological Institute uh, uh, of the of the former Limnological in Institute of the Hungarian uh, Academy of Sciences, which is also interesting for for several investors to to acquire this uh, this huge uh, 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 assets uh, at, and the the, the uh, 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 property of the uh, of the, the research in institutes of uh, research infrastructure of the uh, academy also uh, contains for instance uh, a nuclear plant close to budapest but also, also hotels and an important art collection where one part of the of the artworks are in the building of the actual uh, research network so finally the government and the parliament decided that the hungarian academy of sciences can keep the ownership of uh, of every uh, every property every uh, buildings and uh, every movable uh, objects but uh, uh, some the the new research the newly established research network can use uh, several buildings which earlier also belonged to this uh, research network but as a property uh, of the hungarian academy of sciences and as a, a part of the hungarian academy of sciences um, it, it was made possible uh, uh, by the, Hung the by the continental approach of uh, property law which also allows to to um, uh, assign somebody as a, uh, the owner of an object even if it uh, if has no right uh, uh, on the on the objects uh, and our argument is that it is a de facto expropriation so practically an expropriation a taking of uh, the ownership of the hungarian uh, academy of sciences so it is problematic from the point of view of the hungarian uh, academy of sciences and can uh, establish further complaints against the state but the other uh, hand uh, uh, it leads to a research network without uh, the financial background without, without property uh, which is the case uh, actually so uh, and that's why uh, concerning the the domestic the no national law uh, uh, last Lovas, Professor Last Lovas, who was the former president, so he was the president during this case uh, of the uh, Hungarian, of Acad Hungarian Academy of Sciences, uh, made a, a complaint at the Constitutional Court, also ref referring to the freedom of science, uh, but also on the property laws, lost uh, uh, property rights lost uh, 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 during this process. The problem is that there is no decision yet. And there are several other uh, ordinary jur jurisdictions cases uh, ongoing, for instance, defamation cases against the uh, uh, government friendly press. But uh, uh, in the in the domestic law, in the domestic uh, jurisdiction, there is no other ongoing uh, trial process concerning this case because we should wait uh until the first uh, uh first employee of the of the new research network uh, will be fired because of uh, some kind of uh, of uh, reason like uh, i don't know uh, writing about uh, uh, gender studies or something like that which uh, not happened yet formally so uh we had uh, informal threats but uh, but not formal uh, threats yet and the other possibility, also, of course, is to go to international to an international forum, uh, but for this uh, you need to exhaust uh, the the local remedies. And now uh, the main problem uh, with uh, all the the, the situation of, of of Hungary is that it's a kind of uh, limbo. So it looks like an ordinary democracy. There is a constitutional court. Uh, there is a parliament which seems to uh, functioning. Uh, but uh, in fact, uh, uh, it is already seized by the government. So you can go to the constitutional court, but uh, uh, it is unlikely that you will have a, a favorable de decision uh, from them. Um, 
And uh, the other problem is that it is not easy to, to argue against the, the Hungarian system because the other systems in, within the union, uh, European Union also contain some elements which seem to be, seems to be uh, 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 comparable with uh, the Hungarian system. So, for instance, uh, in France, they can say that uh, the other nest research uh, networks is also under government control, even if this, this government control does not extend on scientific truth, for instance. Uh, and that's why uh, it is easier to argue that uh, this uh, whole process uh, uh, is uh, against the property law of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences. But in this case, you have to prove that the Hungarian Academy of Sciences is an independent uh, 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 organ uh, uh, from the from the Hungarian state and uh, the, the other problem is that uh, the uh, pro the jurisdiction and property law uh, focus rather uh, on investments of foreign states so it is not easy to to uh, find remedy uh, at the international forum. Uh, in the individual cases, against you have to weigh the exhaustion of the local remedies. Then you can uh, refer on the maybe on the chilling effect, which uh, not happened yet. And the time is also a, a huge problem because in the case of the Central European Union, uh, it uh, lasted three years that uh, they get uh, a de decision, and uh, during this time they left the the country. So. Um, the, the Hungarian Aca uh, uh, Academic Staff Forum tried to, to represent these cases, but it is only an association. There is also several. There are also several un uh, labor union within the the uh, Hungarian Academy of, uh, of Sciences. It's one of them, and the TDDS uh, is representing more than ten percent of the employees. So it is a, it's a representative uh, labor union. Uh, but the labor law itself contains nothing about uh, 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 about the question of, of free science. And uh, as a conclusion, so when we when the our panel was accepted, the question of the committee was now what? So what what can we uh, do? And uh, we also uh, already represented that uh, presented that. Uh, uh, we try to to find contact with uh, with the press. We also uh, made the networking uh, uh, within the research network because these research institutes are very separated. So uh, I did not know, for instance, uh, uh, the other colleagues from the uh, Hungarian uh, from this Hungarian Academy uh, Staff Forum, uh, and we have also this kind of watchdog function. Uh, uh, in the system, we also uh, uh, exert solidarity toward the other universities. For instance, now uh, some of the members of the of this uh, association are at the protest uh, uh, for the University of Theater and Film Art, uh, and we also try to build regional and international networks. Uh, uh, for instance, we organized a conference uh, together with the embassy of the Federal Republic of Germany and the CEU. And uh, as a recommendation, we think that it is very interest, in, important uh, concerning the EU uh, research grant that uh, they should take into consideration the independence of the research network but on the, the, on the basis of a new and more elaborated definition of independence, uh, we think that uh, 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 the Hungarian state should add uh, uh, new aspects to, to the labor uh, uh, law regulation uh, and uh, the, this new system, if it is maintained, should also uh, 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 ensure the re representation of the researchers and the administrative staff uh, in the board. And we should also, uh, because of this uh, new approach of commons, uh, put more emphasis on the property and the uh, budget law. So uh, with the quote of the allegory of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences, Osnubila Phoebus, after the, uh, the clouds, uh, the sun, I would like to thank you uh, your attention and now we will give the floor for the questions.
which we received uh, in the chat. So I just. Yeah, the uh, first question came from Minty Reiza. So, are funds from collaborators outside Hungary allowed? Yes, they are allowed. Sometimes they are even promoted. And the number and the budget of collaboration is often regarded as a figure of merit uh, during the judgment of the Institute. However, I must also tell that income obtained from abroad uh, by civil organizations in Hungary is very highly stigmatized. Uh, so these uh, regulations are nearly contradictory. And I am looking forward to whether uh, they uh, uh, will mean a deeper conflict in uh, various fields in Hungary. The second question from the same person was exactly uh, what was exactly the government fearing in terms of research being conducted? Was it in the social sciences more than the natural sciences? Yes, definitely. We can well remember that the story started in sometimes 2012, 2013, where a near government journal listed philosophers and accused them of being too liberal or exerting some activity against the national interest. Uh, and this process uh, keep going on so much that even the present, uh, presently appointed president of the Hungarian Academy of Sciences uh, wrote a letter to the uh, head of the government and uh, made some very dubious statement on how social sciences and legal sciences uh, and their institutes should be treated uh, uh, within the research network of the Academy of Sciences. And for the question, who is who in the government was particularly pushing these uh, measures, uh, we highly believe that the compliance criterion to become uh, a government member is the obedience to the prime minister. So I guess that this statement highly involves on what we think about the origin uh, of these pursuits and measures. Okay, you did for the next question. There been a demonstrable bias. Has there been a demonstrable bias against dissemination of unpopular and or negative data? So I can uh, take two examples. The statistics national or the Central Statistical Bureau that has limited its uh, its publications of statistics about uh, po poverty in Hungary. So um, and changed what poverty means in in their uh, numbers. So that's that's a big uh, a limitation for us social scientists. And another another um, example, uh, one of our own colleagues who is uh, researching corruption has been sued, um, and uh, and lost a lawsuit. Um, so that, that these are two examples um, um, of this. Mm -hmm. So as for the informal pressure exercised by the leaders of the. Uh, European Union against the direction now underway. Uh, the voice of other academies of science, uh, for example, yes, there were plenty of, I don't know how many of uh, solidarity declaration from other academies. Uh, from the point of view uh, of, the, of the leaders of the European Union, uh, the whole situation in Hungary. So they uh, they express uh, the that they are not content with the actual situation. But uh, but uh, even in the case of the Central European Union, they try to find some solution, especially Manfred Weber. But uh, uh, finally, the, the the university had to had to leave Hungary. Also. Um. There's one more question, if I, if I can answer that, about private funding. Is it possible? I, I, I don't find the original question here, but the, if, if private funding is possible, I mean, if you just think of the Central European University, it's a privately funded university, but it was expelled, obviously because it couldn't be controlled by the, by the government. It was easier to expel it uh, by, by administrative measures. Uh, also, there are a couple of universities owned and run by, by churches, like the Catholics has one, the, the Reformed Church has one, but 
but usually they are funded by by certain normatives and and grants or kind of um, normative um, annual um, uh, funding by the government. So so absolute private university in that sense do not really exist. Or they're, they're relatively small ones or or international ones, but very important ones are not. But actually now, if if you just think what 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 what, what Laszlo was saying that. What the government is doing is basically privatizing state universities, but putting loyal members into the into the boards. And even after a change of government in 2022, these universities now I think eight universities being privatized by the government, gonna be run within a in a form of a foundation stuffed by people loyal to the government. So it's gonna be private university in a foundation paid by the government, but not controlled by the next government. It's, it's kind of tricky, tricky thing. Uh, any other uh, private funding? I would say the climate is not like that, that the anyone would want to build an international, uh, I mean, uh, independent institution right now. As you could see in the news that sort of a national oligarchy is being built in the country. And those who can win in the in the uh, in the tenders of building highways and and constructions and whatever are usually more or less loyal at least uh, uh, complying with the government. So I, I wouldn't say that anyone gonna dare to build any any anything independent in the country in the next couple of years. So even if there there, there are rich people, they don't not gonna risk anything like that. Um, I don't know if we have any other question of that. So uh, let me just add one short thought on what the external pressure on the informal influence would mean to Hungary. Uh, practically nothing. When the confiscation uh, of the Hungarian uh, Institute network from the academy was actually taking place, there was uh, hundreds of solidarity statements from various European universities and scientific organizations. And since the more than 95% of the media is directly government regulated, uh, these uh, uh, statements and solidarity uh, demonstrations were fully neglected uh, by the government or rather kept in secret. So they have, they have very little influence to the entire Hungarian society, although we, the researchers, do know about them. So I hope that we answered all the questions. And uh, thank you very much for, for your attention. And we are hoping the, the best. And, uh, Stay sane and safe. Thank you very much. Goodbye.